Hi there guys, this is going to be video number two on the FX Maverick. In the last video we disassembled it down to this point. In this video we're going to be reassembling the rifle. Like the impact, these things have an order in which you have to reassemble them for them to be properly aligned. And like my impact video, I've made a number of small improvements to the rifle, which I'll show you as we progress in the build. So first of all, it's basically going to be the reverse of how we disassembled it. So the last thing we took off was the valve seat, and in the reassembly, that's the first thing we're going to put back. Now, in my previous video, you saw that I used this valve removal tool. Now, if I'm honest, this is just something that I've had knocking around in the workshop for a little while, and it's about time I made a new tool. And here it is here. This is my new valve seat remover. Since a couple of people asked in the last video, I'll post a couple of these on eBay. So here's our valve seat. We place it on the end, do the screw up a bit, and then the valve seat's nice and held in place. And it's just a little nicer than that press fit thing I made. So, first of all, the valve goes in this way round. So the large countersink side goes to the wall to the muzzle. Just put a small amount of silicone oil on this o-ring, so it's nice and easy to get in. This top hole here, and as you push it in, let it find its seat. If you force it, you'll cut the o-ring. So just wiggle it gently with light pressure, and you should feel it snap into the seat. And there it is there. Next up, we can put the valve pin in, and we can just add a little silicone oil to that o-ring at the front there. Wiping off the excess with our fingers. You've got to make sure the valve's nice and clean. Just make sure there's no particles or anything on the valve itself. Place that in there and push it home. Once that's in there, we can place back the valve return spring. I've got given the ends a bit of a polish up so it just works a little nicer. It's in there nicely. And then lastly, this little cap. Now, if you look in here, You'll notice I've given it a polish. Now polishing the outsides not necessary but what I found was that that hole in the middle where the valve pin runs in was quite sharp so I just put a countersink in there took the burr off and it's now nice and free. You can screw that on. Once we get it started I'll just add a little silicon oil to this o-ring then screw it on. Then we can nip it up with an 11mm spanner. It obviously wants to be tight, but not so tight as you strip the threads. The next thing to go on is the little double-ended threaded part that goes in the block here. Now, I mentioned in the previous video that when I took this off, there wasn't any sealant around this thread. Just use that O-ring. And whilst it didn't leak at the time, to prevent further leaks, what I'm going to do is add some thread sealant to this thread here. What I'm going to be using is Loctite 545. That's just general purpose pneumatic and hydraulic sealant. So we'll just put a small amount on the threads at the end there. And just wipe it around with our fingers. I'm also going to put a little drop of silicon oil on this o-ring. Just a small amount. And try and keep the thread lock and the silicon oil away from each other. And that can go back in the rifle. Like that. Then to do it up. It's a 15mm spanner. Again, nice and tight. And while we're here, I'm just going to put the doughty washer back on this thread here. Okay, so we can set the block to one side. And next up, I'm going to start work on the regulator. Now, like in, I said in my previous video, I'm not going to show you both regulators as they are the same. I've done my usual tricks with the regulator. I've replaced all the O-rings. Give the Belleville washers a quick polish up. And... I've given both the face of the piston and face of the adjuster screw a good polish up. So they're both nice and shiny now. In case you missed the impact video, the shiny faces just help the two seal against each other. If there isn't a good seal between these two faces, the regulator can creep. So a good polish up with some nice really fine paper just to get all the scratches and that out really goes a long way. Like always, the thinner pairs of Bellevilles go at the bottom, and the thicker ones go towards the top. 
how much difference that actually makes, I'm not sure. But it's the way they came out, so it's the way they're going back in. And I'm going to put some dry lube on it, as I do with all the regulators. When the dry lube's on there, I can just add a little bit of silicon oil to this bottom o-ring. Just to lubricate it as it goes in. Then it's ready to go back in. Pushed it in there, it's in the bottom there. Now the reg body can go back. And like always, drop a silicon oil on the top, just a tad on the bottom there. There's no ring inside here, which this part of the regulator body rides on. So just a small amount of oil to help with lubrication as it goes back in the rifle. And that's done with just a 5mm Allen key. Then you adjust a screw. Small amount of silicon oil and just wiping off with the fingers. Putting it in there. Then a 2.5mm Allen key. Do it in until it stops and back it out quarter turn. We'll readjust the reg pressure when the rifle's all back together. So I'm going to put the air tube all back together now, excluding the bottle adapter. So I'll just leave off the bottle adapter, but I'll put all the other parts together. So I'm not going to be taking the air cylinder apart anytime soon. So instead of silicon oil, I'm going to be putting some silicon grease on the O-rings. This should just last a bit longer than the oil and won't migrate around. Obviously, you have to make sure the threads are nice and clean before you put this back together. And since this is a sub-12, the regulator is going out the back. Right, that's the air cylinder put back together, so I'll put that to one side. OK, before we put the blocks together and get the chassis of the gun built, what we're going to do is measure the pellet probe. Now the easiest way to do this is to get your barrel, get your pellet probe, and just slide it in. Then line the transfer pull up with the pellet probe so that the hole is fully engaged. Then mark this distance on the pellet probe shoulder here. I like to use a small amount of electrical tape. The holes are fully overlapped when the marks met on the alignment. So what we're going to do is keep the tape on the pellet probe for now and then when we install the cocking arm We'll be able to tell if the pellet probe's in the right position. The cocking arm uses two grub screws on the cocking rod, so it's very easy to get the pellet probe misaligned with the transfer port. This way, we can visually make sure that the pellet probe is always going to be fully engaged in the transfer port. Right, we set this to one side and continue on. Next up, we're going to be tackling the blocks. Okay, so here are the two blocks and the guide for the cocking rod. Now, I misspoke a little bit in the, my previous video, I called this part Delrin. What I meant was it had a Delrin bearing in the end, the actual housing is aluminium. What I've done is I've replaced the Delrin bearing with a PTFE one. PTFE is just a bit more slippery than Delrin, and I've made it a little closer fit on the cocking rod. So, we'll get this assembly made first, and that's just with that little spring there, it goes in the back, Push it down with a small allen key and then this little grub screw here can be inserted in the side. Now before we insert this all the way we're going to just put a little bit of thread lock on this so it doesn't come loose. Just a small drop will do and that can be wound in with a 2mm allen key. Now you don't wind it all the way through, it's just as a stop to stop that little spring from coming out the other end. Just gap both sides to make sure they're the same and that one side isn't sticking out. Next, we can just install the guide into the front block. This is just a little easier to do as it is now, as when the air cylinder is in here, it's a bit fiddly to get tight. Okay, next we're going to loosely install this front block. That's done using a little countersunk screw in this hole in the bottom. Then we do that up with a 2.5mm Allen key. We just want to nip it up and undo it quarter of a turn so the block is free to rotate. Before we put the top rail on, I just want to mention something that I've done to the top of these blocks. I noticed a little pip in the middle of them. 
when I took them apart so I've just stoned that off with a nice flat stone. As you can see here just the high points have been taken out. Same on this block. I've also as you can see there put a little countersink on each of the holes. This is because when you run your finger across them they were quite sharp to the touch and I didn't want any material sticking out and inhibiting the top rail from screwing down nice and flat. Next what we're going to do is install the top rail. We're going to do it loosely first, align everything then tighten it up. So as you can see I left the screws in mine but if you for some reason took yours out the short screws go at the back and the longer ones go at the front. And we're just going to be doing them up with a two and a half mil allen key. Like the bottom, nip them up then undo them quarter turn. Like so. Everything should be still nice and loose. Next what I'm going to do is just slide the cocking rod in. Next I'm just going to install the barrel just loosely. And what this does is align the two blocks. And then finally I'm going to be putting the air cylinder through. doesn't have to be in the right place, just has to be in the middle of the two so that we can tighten them down and the blocks won't twist. I'll explain exactly why we do it this way in a minute. With all this installed we can go around with a 3mm allen key and just tighten these bolts here. They don't have to be done super tight as we're going to be loosening them in a minute but they want to be tight enough so that they're gripping onto the cylinder. Once that's done we can tighten the top rail up. Then what you've got to do is feel the gap either side and make sure it's the same. Now there must be a small amount of misalignment in the machining on my rifle as it's closer to one side than there is the other. It's overhanging a little on this side and flush on the back side here. So what I'm going to do is just feel the gap at this end and this end and get them the same. With our two and a half mil allen key just feeling the gap and holding the top rail in position. As we tighten up, we can adjust and then just tighten it down. Once you're happy, you can go ahead, tighten it down to final torque. Again, these are quite small screws, so they don't want to be up, done up super tight. They want to be done up nice and tight so that they don't come loose. Next we can check the alignment of the blocks by taking the barrel in and out a couple times. It's not super tight like it is on the impact so the barrel won't find its own way but there should be no metal to metal contact as you push the barrel through. So I'm happy with that. The same thing can be done with the cocking rod here. It should float back and forward nice and easily. There shouldn't be no hard points, sticking points or friction. Right, now that we've aligned the blocks we can go ahead and loosen these bolts here. Then we can slide the air cylinder out. And pull the barrel and cocking rod. We'll just set that to one side for a second. Okay, so why did we do it in the order we did it? Well, simply put, we wanted to align everything with the scope rail. The scope rail is our natural datum, as the scope rail has to be in line with the barrel, otherwise, if the two are crossed, you're gonna be using a load of windage or elevation if it's not aligned with these two blocks. By installing the barrel, the cocking rod, and the air cylinder, what we effectively did is aligned the two blocks with the axis of the rifle. When I was putting this rifle back together for a dry run, I found that if I tightened from the bottom up, what would happen is the blocks would be slightly misaligned. And when they were placed flat on a surface plate, there'd be a slight amount of rock. What I discovered was that this bottom plate here isn't machined on the top surface. It's just a raw extrusion. So to combat this inaccuracy, what I could have done is put it in the mill and face the top, 
which would have realigned the top and made it so it didn't matter what end I started at. However, because I'm doing this for YouTube and I know a lot of you don't have access to machine equipment, I wanted to find a way of doing it so that you can do it at home. And while tightening this block up now may twist the scope rail, once we have the air tube and the barrel in, it certainly won't twist it. It will stay nice and aligned. So, I hope that made sense. It was just something I observed when I was rebuilding the rifle. So, we can put this assembly to one side for a second. We'll come back to it in a minute. For now, we'll bring back the block and we're going to reinstall the air tube. Okay, so the back of the air tube, this is what the Doughty washer seal is on. So I'm just going to put a very, very small amount of silicon grease on this face to help with lubrication as it screws on. I'm using silicon grease because I don't ever imagine myself taking this apart, so I want it to stay there. And then we can just screw that on. Next, we can bring back the two block assemblies and slide it over the air cylinder. Okay, now we're at this stage, what we need to do is slide the top rail all the way back till it touches the block and then we can screw the front bottle adapter on. Like I said before, I've already rebuilt the reg in the bottle adapter, so it's ready to go on. If you remember also, we took a very thin large diameter o-ring which I've placed in the bottom there and I've just added some silicon grease to it to keep it in place and so it doesn't tear when we screw it on to here. Likewise, we're just putting a small amount of silicon grease around this front o-ring. Then we can reinstall the bottle adapter. Now this doesn't need to be done up tight to seal. The o-ring on the air tube will seal on the inside of the bottle adapter and when the rifle is pressurised, this will all become stiff and it won't be out of turn. But it will also seal. So, as you can see here, if we tighten it right up, bottle adapter is 180 degrees out of alignment. So we're just going to loosen it off, get it in loose alignment. Once the bottle adapter's in, what we're going to do is reinstall the barrel and the cocking rod. We can just go ahead and tighten the barrel grub screw down to keep it in place. Then just reinstall the cocking rod. The cocking rod goes in this third hole down and we have to align the pin with the slot in here. Now in my previous video I told you to take a number of measurements from this block here to the main block. On my rifle it was between 74.6 and 74.7 millimeters. So what we're going to do is set this gap here to what we measured before. I've got about got it there. It's measuring about 74.6 on the calipers. So I'm going to call that good. And to double check the measurement, what I did was I took another measurement from down here. And this should be about 92.7. So 92.64, I think that's close enough. I did say to measure in between here as well. This is just for reference, as the screws keep this distance fairly fixed. However, a quick measurement will tell us if anything is majorly misaligned, which it isn't. So we're happy with the measurements, so we can now start tightening things up. Whilst putting some upward pressure on this block here, what we're going to do is tighten these rear ones up first. Not super tight, but just so it starts to grip in place. Once the rear arm's tight, what we can do is turn the gun on its end, look down it, make sure there's no major misalignment anywhere. It really shouldn't be, as it can't move that much, but it's always good to take a double check before we start tightening everything up. So I'm happy with that. Before we go ahead and tighten these front ones, it is important to make sure that your bottle adapter is lined up. Once these two are tightened, you may not be able to turn the bottle adapter. So just make sure that it's where you want it to be. Once you're happy, you can go ahead and tighten the screws down. Right, so these need to be fairly tight as they are holding the entire rifle together. So I like to use a regular Allen key and just give them a good tighten. 
Again, without a torque wrench, it's hard to give you an exact torque, but it's tight enough so that they're nice and not going to come loose, but not so tight as you strip the threads. And once we've got the blocks nice and tight, we can go ahead and finally tighten this screw down here. That's just done with a 2mm Allen key. If you like, you can keep the barrel in, but it's a little easier to manipulate for the camera if I take it out, so I'm going to take my barrel out. Now with the barrel removed, what we're going to do is reinstall the cocking arm. So first of all, we're just going to install the cocking arm at the back here. That's just done with using a little grub screw with a shaft on it. Put that in like so. And then do it up with a 1.5mm Allen key. And then that just needs to be snug to the bottom. Once that's installed, what we can do, go ahead and do is pull the cocking rod back. Then what we can do from this side is just thread the cocking rod through the arm. Making sure that this pin is always aligned with the bottom there. So we'll push that down. All the way to home. We'll tackle the final alignment shortly. So first of all we're going to take our probe that we marked earlier with a little blue piece of tape. I'm going to put that in the back here and that's going in this top hole. Before I put it in I will mention that I've given it a good polish up. It was quite rough before and it had some quite deep turning marks. I've heard some people say that the turning marks are left in there intentionally so that the pellet probe catches some grease. Whilst this is true technically, it's not like this thing is running backwards and forwards at a million miles an hour. It's going to be pulled back very slowly and pushed forward very slowly. So having it nice and shiny and a small amount of grease over it will be plenty enough for this application. What I did also was just give this bore in here a little hone. And I did that with just some sandpaper and a split rod. And as you can see there, it slides up and down the bore very nicely. So before this goes in the back, we're just gonna put a very, very light smear of lithium grease over the probe. Just a light amount will do you. And then we can slide it in the rear of the rifle. Once we've put the pellet probe in, slid it backwards and forwards a couple of times to distribute the grease, what we're going to do now is align the cocking rod with the pellet probe. This is much, much easier than trying to align them through this hole here. And that hole there is only really for if you want to swap calibers. But since we've got the power wheel off, we can do it nice and easily in the back here. So what we're going to do is take our rod, drop it through the pellet probe, then line it up with the cocking rod. Then we can do that up with just a 2.5mm Allen key. Then once it's done up nice and tight, we can just push it through the gun. Okay, now that the pellet probe and the cocking linkage are installed, we can go ahead, reinstall the barrel, or you may have left it in. Make sure it's all the way back, where it's going to be installed in the rifle. Then we can go ahead and just tighten that out with the grub screw down. We can now align the pellet probe with the transfer port. So as you saw before, we marked the pellet probe so that it's perfectly in line with the transfer port. Now what we've got to do is push this in until we're happy, and then tighten up this grub screw or one of these two grub screws here. This will make sure the pellet probe's always in the right place for the transfer port. So the easiest way I've found to do this, you have a two mil Allen key in one of these grub screws here just loosely, just get it so that the grub screw is touching, then back it off a quarter of a turn or so. Then with a larger Allen key, just press in this hole here. What you'll have to do is press against spring pressure and you can see there the blue part moving. So what we're going to do is align the blue tape with the transfer bolt. So just push it in until it's right, then tighten that grub screw. Then, as we can see there, the pellet probe should always be aligned with the transfer bolt. And just make sure the pellet probe's not proud of that face there. 
it shouldn't be if properly aligned but there we go so we can go ahead and tighten these two screws down now and that's just with a 2mm allen key again these need to be fairly tight as you don't want them slipping during use right that's all the hard work done now it's just a case of throwing everything back together so starting with the block here what we're going to do is put the hammer spring assembly back in now I've given my hammer a good polish up I've also polished the spring and made a little PTFE guide for this end of the spring. It's got a hole in it so that the adjuster screw can come through the middle nicely. It's the same old as what I did with the crown and the impact and it works nicely on them rifles so it should work nicely on this one as well. Now in my previous video I made a slight mistake. I said that this spring in the sub 12 versions was a soft spring. It's actually the same one they use in the FAC rifles. I only looked at it briefly and I didn't realise that it was a stronger one. I just assumed they'd put the softer one in. So that's a little redaction, if you will, of previous facts. I've left the hammer weight in. Um, I'm going to try tuning it with and without the hammer weight and we'll see what happens. But for now, for this build, it's going back in. And the hammer spring adjuster on the back here. What we're going to do is just wind it in. We'll reset the power at a later date. So once we're all happy, we can put the hammer and its assembly back in this hole here. Getting everything nicely aligned with that slot at the top. And as we pull back, we see everything gets moved back and forward nicely. Next, to stop anything falling out, we're going to put the power wheel back on. So first of all, we'll just put the little spring in this hole here. And I'm just going to add a little smear of lithium grease to this face here. Then we'll put the ball back on top of the spring. And then the power wheel can go back on top of that. Then the screw can go through the middle. And we can do that up with a 2.5mm Allen key. Spins nice and freely. Next, we're going to put the trigger sear back in. Okay, so I've given my trigger sear a good polish. I've just polished all the working faces. Made them nice and shiny, so it should slip over the hammer nice and easily. I didn't change the ramp on the Maverick hammer like I do the Crown hammers. I haven't tried one with this sear yet. So what I'm probably going to do is have a little experiment off camera. But for now, we'll just put it back as it came out. Okay, so the sear goes in round this way in, and we need to align it with this top pin here. The pins have to go in from this side, as the other side is a smaller hole, and it doesn't allow the pins to drop through. There we have it, the first pin's through. Second pin, you just the sear stop. So this needs to go on the back side of the sear like so, and it just stops it from falling down too far. Before we put the trigger plate in, we need to install this pin down the bottom here. Okay, this little arm here has a return spring which needs to be installed before we can put the pin in. It's this thin spring here, and that just goes in that hole down there. Poke it in with some tweezers, and then we can fold the arm back. With the spring in place, we just need to put the pin through this hole here. And we can push it home. Okay, so before we put the trigger plate back into the rifle, I just wanted to talk about the adjustments. Now, the only two that actually matter are the first and second stage. First stage is at the front, and doing this in gives you less first stage. If you do this in too far, you won't be able to cock the rifle. So there needs to be a small amount of first stage present 
in the trigger setup to enable you to properly cock the rifle. The second stage is controlled by this screw here and the second stage is balanced along with the first stage. If the second stage screw isn't installed far enough you won't have any second stage and it will just be a one stage trigger too far in and you'll have a horrible creepy trigger. So this needs to be adjusted properly and to your tastes. I personally like a very short first stage and then a nice crisp second. So that's how I'll set my trigger up. These rear two screws, this one, this one is a catch for the spring and this rear one is just a stop to stop you pulling the trigger too far back. Both of which were set fine from the factory so I haven't touched them. So let's install the trigger plate. What we're going to need to do first is put the trigger return spring on the rear of the sear. I've found it's much easier to hook it on the sear first then put the tri trigger plate over the top. Push that down and then we can align the third hole. Give it a wiggle and it should find its way in. And now we can just put the covering grub screws in. And that's just done with a 1.5mm allen key. Don't do these up super tight. If you do them up too tight you'll press the pins into the tapered hole on the other side and you won't be able to get them out. Now on my rifle there's a fourth hole here. However, as you saw in the disassembly video, this didn't have a grub screw in it. I was simply going to replace this but from one out of my stash. However, when I went to put it in there, I found out why they left it out. It's not tapped deep enough, so the grub screw sticks out a long way from the body. Now this isn't a big deal as it is held in by the chassis of the Maverick. And I just wanted to point it out in case anyone was confused or they had what a grub screw that I didn't. So if your rifle came fitted with one you can go ahead and refit it. Okay next we can go ahead and fit this little boss. And that's just done with a 2.5mm allen key. What you want to do is get both done up and aligned then just snug them up the last little bit. Right so while we're at the back here I'm going to readjust my trigger. Now if we cock it back and pull the trigger, it's got quite a lot of first stage and a heavy second stage. So I'm going to take out some first stage by screwing this first screw in and as I've adjusted the first stage I now need to readjust the second stage. Now it's a one stage trigger pull at the moment so I'm going to go ahead and add some second stage. And I'm just going to go back and forward until I get the trigger just how I like it. Right, so I've been going at it for a little while now and I've finally got the trigger where I like it. Small amount of first stage, then a nice crisp second stage. While we're talking about the trigger, I just wanted to mention the safety. Now from standard, I wasn't able to flick the gun on safe while it was uncocked. Now I've seen a couple of people say this is a feature, but I prefer to be able to put this rifle on safe whenever I like. So all I did to do this was this little grub screw here is adjustable. So I just adjusted it in a couple turns and I was able to put the rifle on safe even when it's not cocked. So now I can cock it in safe, it stays in safe, then when I flick it to fire it's ready to fire. And that's just that little grub screw there. If you want to adjust it like this, all you need to do is turn that grub screw in till it just clears the trigger plate. So it's almost touching there, then in far it's well out of the way. Right, so almost done guys. All we need to do now is reinstall the gauges and put it back in the chassis. As I said in the disassembly video, these are them digital gauges I did the review on. And then lastly, the chassis can go back on.
just press it over, it can be a little stiff. But then the short countersunk screw goes in the back. And that's just with a 3mm Allen key. And then the longer screw goes in the front. And that's done up with just a 2.5mm Allen key. So I'll put the dust cover back over the fill port. And then the shroud can be slid on. And the shroud just screws on like that. Then lastly, we can regas the rifle. And there it is guys, all built back up again. Doesn't seem to be leaking, but what it will do is we'll leave it overnight, make sure it doesn't leak. Now, I've already showed you how to readjust the regulators on the Maverick, so I won't bore you with that again. So I'll just do that off camera. But that's going to be it for this one guys. So thanks for watching, hope you learned something, or got more of a better idea of how to rebuild the Maverick. So, thanks for watching guys, and I'll see you in the next one.